Let's take a look at the basic concept of quantum variable. First of all, I would like to start with an experiment. So we have an experiment. Okay, what are we trying to do? So let's do, we roll two fair dice. So we roll two dice. And then I want the x equals to the sum of the face value. Of the two face value. Now, tell me, what? How, how many distinct outcomes do we have? What is the smallest sum you can get? A two six-sided die has a six faces, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. So you have two dice. So that means the minimum is one plus one. So the minimum is equals to two. What about the maximum? The maximum is six plus six equals to 12, right? So the sum can be two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 12. So 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So I totally missed the 11. How many distinct outcomes are there? So from 2 to 12, there are 11 distinct outcomes, right? So I have 11 distinct outcomes. Or you can say 11 distinct sums, right? So these 11 distinct sums is countable. So I can use my finger to count that there are 11 different outcomes. So let's do one more. So this one, um, how about, so we have an experiment. So this time I want to choose a real number. So choose a real number between 2 and 12. Can you give me some results or some outcomes? Uh, two, all right, good. Uh, three, perfect. How about 2.01? How about 3.01902? How about 6.55? How about 6.5505? How about 11.01006? and so on and so forth. They are all real numbers between 2 and 12. So in case you don't know what real numbers is, you can pick a uh, integer, including the decimal. So that means there are infinitely many outcomes in here, right? So there are infinitely many outcomes. So we, we have infinitely many outcomes. Is there another word to describe that? So another word to describe this is we have countless number of outcomes. So countless number of outcomes. What about the other side? The other side, we have countable number of outcomes. So on the other side, the two dice problem. So we have countable, which is the opposite of countless. Countable number of outcomes. So therefore, this x is called a discrete random variable. So this x, the sum of two phase value, the x is called a discrete random variable. And then on the other side, and that x, we call that x is a continuous random variable. So what is the difference between discrete and continuous? Discrete is countable number of outcome. Continuous is countless or not countable number of outcome. So let me give you one picture to explain this discrete and continuous. So for continuous random variable, I am going to draw a line. All right. And then for discrete random variable, I am going to draw a few dots. So what is the difference in here? So the few dots, I can use my finger to count the, there are eight dots, right? So you use your finger count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There are eight dots. So that is countable number of outcomes. So look to the other side. Can you count the number of dots on that uh, pink line? The answer is no, right? Because the line contains infinitely many dots, right? I am not able to use my finger to count the number of dots. But one thing that I can do is uh, that is not countable, but is measurable. What about the dots? The dot is countable. So the problem is countable versus measurable. 
all right so let me give you some example of a discrete random variable so we have discrete random variable so let's say um number of students in a classroom so in a in a building you select a classroom randomly and then you count the number of students so when you count students how do you count you use your finger to count right so let's say you go to the parking lot and then you count the number of cars how do you count you use your finger to count let's say you go to library and then you count the number of books how do you do this you use your finger and then you go to a computer lab and then you count the number of computer right and then uh you randomly select a student and then you count the number of classes that this student is taking right so the computer and the number of classes so when you report a number like this what kind of number do you report five classes zero class one class two classes so on and so forth right students how many students do you see in a room 40 students uh, 50 25 10 9 0 so you give me a number how many students do you have in your English class 40 you answer 40 right and then on the other side for the continuous random variable so what are some examples so let's say uh, the area of a randomly selected apartment so the area of a randomly selected apartment so what 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 kind of number is that so let's say uh, you have an apartment your the area is a uh, 900 square feet do you say the area of my apartment is 900 i will ask you hey 900 of what right so you have to give me a number followed by a digit for not followed by a digit you have to give me a number followed by a unit 900 square feet 1000 square feet 2000 square feet you cannot say 1000 2000 or 600 600 of what you have to give me a number followed by a unit so that is continuous random variable not countable you cannot use your finger to count how big your room is right but you can measure how big your room is and another uh, another example so let's say the volume of a water bottle do you use your finger to count the volume do you touch the water or touch the space inside the bottle to count the volume no you don't right you measure the volume one gallon two gallons or half gallons so on and so forth so the numbers are one gallon two gallons you don't say one two one one of what two of what right and then what about uh air pressure so the air pressure they usually use psi so air pressure can you count air no but it's measurable not countable how about the weight of a randomly selected a uh, laptop so let's say it's a uh, five five pounds you don't say the weight of my laptop is two 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 what three three what you have to give me two pounds three pounds of course you can include numbers like 2.5 pounds 3.01 pound 6.33 24 pounds so on and so forth so that is the difference between discrete and continuous in discrete you give me a number only and that number to in order to get that number you use your finger to count on the other hand continuous there is no way to count it's not countable it's measurable so you have to use some device to measure the numbers and then the data is a number followed by a unit so let me give you a definition of random variable so here is the definition of random variable so in the future random variable i will just use rv r stands for random v stands for variable so random variable is a quantitative variable x is a random variable if the value of that if the value that x takes on a given experiment or observation is a chance or random outcome is a chance or random outcome what does that mean so simply speaking so back to the two dice problem we have x equals to the sum right so let's say i want to find the probability the sum is equals to one so when x is equals to one what is the probability so you add two numbers up can the sum be one 
So the minimum is one, right? One plus one can never be equal to one. Then the probability is equal to zero. Can you get a sum that x is equal to two? So the answer is yes. So out of the six by six, 36 outcomes. So one of the outcome is one plus one equals to two. So that is one out of 36. How about when x is equals to three, the sum is equals to three, you can have a one plus two or a two plus one. So out of 36 outcomes, two of them have a sum of three. So every x is associated with a probability. So x equals to one has its own probability, which is a chance. x equals to two has its a probability. x equals to three is a probability. So the variable, you heard this word before, right? Variable means an unknown quantity. So we use x. So x is a variable. So in math, every time people mention x, y, z, you say that is a variable. What about random? So random is a word that we use in probability a lot. Random means that variable x is associated with some probability. So that is what the random variable is. So that will be all in this video. Let me think what, let me know what you think in the comment section below. If you think my instruction is helpful, please like, subscribe, and share. I appreciate your help really much. I see you all in the next lesson. Signing out for now.